All right. So for me, the episode with Heather's meltdown phone call, it better be the next one. Like I have fatigue. I am super tired. Um, I'm kind of over the anticipation of it. You know, like at this point, it really has to be something shocking. I really hope it's nothing that we have discussed or talked about. It can't be beauty lab. Like at this point, it needs to be something so outrageous and so shocking that none of us would have ever seen it coming. Okay. But this episode was a good primer for, you know, taking sides and people being against other people. So there's Meredith versus Lisa, Monica, and Angie. I am obviously team Meredith. I I honestly don't think she was behind the DMs. I really think it was Monica. I really do. I Do I think that Meredith has done shady stuff? 100%. But this, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think I really think it was Monica. And then we have Whitney versus Heather. And I'm obviously team Heather on that one as well. So let's move on to Monica. Okay. So Monica, again, she's lying about not having birthdays. Like I'm so tired of her trying to play this like poor woe is me orphan Annie person. I can't believe you guys had, you know, croissants for my birthday. Is this a mimosa? Oh my God. Like girl, stop. You've had birthdays before. You have girlfriends who have thrown you birthdays before. And she even admitted that her husband, her ex-husband now, her husband at the time, her ex-husband family, he obviously has money. And um, he comes from a family with money and also like they had the more like traditional family parties and holidays and everything. So I'm pretty sure that a part of all of that traditional family life, they had birthday parties for you. So girl, bye. Please stop playing the victim. Okay, stop. Now, when it came to her mom not going to therapy, that didn't prove anything. It didn't prove that Monica's mom is mean. I'm so tired of this broken horse of Monica's mom being toxic and abusive. Stop it. Like y'all stop, stop, Monica, stop. Her mom probably didn't want to film it. And to be honest with you, I'm happy she didn't because I'm tired of these fake therapy scenes that we keep seeing in reality TV. Every single time something comes up, let's hire, you know, 1-800 reality therapist. And they're doing these fake scenes. If I was the mom, I wouldn't show up either. Because if you really want to work on your family stuff, you're going to do it in private. You're going to be able to really talk about, you know, the trauma and the chaos and the dysfunction without having camera crews around. Everybody doesn't want their family business on Front Street. So just because the mom didn't show up to be filmed for therapy doesn't make her a bad mom. It just means Monica said, I'll go to therapy if we can film it. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Now, Monica asking Heather if her daughter is having sex yet was completely inappropriate and disgusting. Oh, I forgot to finish this sentence. Um, And nobody was sex shaming Monica. So again, that's why I'm saying Monica, she is diabolical and very scary because she takes situations and she has this, this, this bizarre ability to make herself the victim no matter what. She's like, I was sex shamed on the bus. No, you aren't. Who, nobody said anything about your sex life. Whether you have it or you don't, nobody was talking about your sex life. You were not sex shamed at all. Like you need a dictionary to look up what it means because you're using it incorrectly and you're not a victim. I thought it was very, very inappropriate for her to ask Heather if her daughter was having sex. Extremely inappropriate. I don't care how old her daughter is. I think her daughter was like in college or something. I don't care how old she is. It was very inappropriate and very disgusting. Very disgusting. Ugh. Anyway, now let's talk about the Bermuda family can- canceling. Now, if I were Monica's mom, I would have canceled the Bermuda the, the Bermuda trip too. Because number one, how are you going to be like, yeah, I want to go to Bermuda to have a family reunion, but mom, you can't come. How do you disinvite your mother to... uh? a family reunion that's her family (laughs) girl bye plus like I said before you know I do think that Monica's mom Linda was like oh hell no I'm not gonna about to have my family embarrassed by Monica's actions not just on camera but in general it would be like it would be embarrassing to have a daughter like Monica super embarrassing how she's treating her mother 
No way. No way. So I'm with Linda on this one. I would I would have put the kibosh on it too, 100%. You're not about to embarrass me. You're not about to disrespect, disrespect me in front of all this camera, in front of my family. You've lost your mind. You know, you've got to draw the line somewhere, right? And then her temper tantrum was, it just reminded me of like a toddler who really wants a lollipop. And is crying and is hyperventilating and is kind of seeing like, can I get the lollipop now? Like she was doing the most like you guys, my mom and nobody wants me and I'm all alone. I was just like, girl, like my niece has more convincing temper tantrums than you do. And she is an actual child. You know, when kids like fake, like, <laughs> like, you know, and you're like, stop, you're about to like pass out. Like, you're not that upset. You're just trying to get what you want. It was so over the top and it was so fake and it was so childish. And I'm like, didn't you just turn like middle aged? Like you just were talking about welcome to middle age. And now you're having a convulsion temper tantrum like a child. Girl, you got to stop. You got to stop. It's not cute. It's not funny. It's 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 too much. It's too much. Now, again, we got to think about motives. Why would Monica invite Lisa, of all people, we know she can't stand Lisa, to go to be the one person to go visit her family? Doesn't make any sense. The first person she should have asked would have been Heather. Because Heather was the one she was closest to. Heather was the one who... um got the entire trip together to go to Bermuda to meet her family for her birthday. So if any of the girls are going to go with Angie to see her family first, it would be Heather, not Lisa. The only reason why she chose Lisa was because she wanted to butter her up to plant the information about Meredith versus Angie and the DMs. And she knew Lisa would take the bait because Lisa is still in her feelings about um ma- about Meredith talking about her business and the SEC filings. You know what I mean? Like Monica might be dumb, but she's not stupid. You get what I'm saying? She's not stupid. She's very manipulative, very, very um calculated. She's a very calculated fake person. Very, very calculated. I don't think she does anything without a reason. I think she's actually that calculated and, manip- and manipulative. She she got she found her way to a snowflake somehow some way. And I don't think it was by chance. You know? Also, um I it's also always hard to watch when and this happens a lot with the housewives when they treat their children like adults. When they treat their children like the children is the mother, is the parent, and they treat them like a child. We see that with her and Brie. Brie, she's like, Brie was, came out the womb as an old soul. Did she? Or is her personality the way she copes with having a very narcissistic, emotionally unavailable, immature mother? Is her personality like an adult? Or did she have to become an adult because you weren't one? And now she has to take care of her younger children while she's also taking care of you. And so she doesn't get to be a kid because she has to be the adult. It's giving very Teresa and Gia vibes. You know, we see this a lot with the housewives where the mother is narcissistic. She's emotionally stunted. And she treats usually the eldest daughter or one of the daughters or sometimes it's even the sons like they're the parent. And that always always makes me sad to watch. So I feel my heart goes out to Brie because she's clearly being the mom of the house when she shouldn't have to be at such a young age. Okay, now let's go on to Miss Angie. To me, Angie is so low energy and it's a bore for me. Angie is a no. She kind of looks like, um, in this photo, she she looks like Anna Maria. Anna Marie from from Beverly Hills, foot, foot vibes. Anyway, To me, this could be a one and done for Angie. I don't need her to come back next season. I really, really don't. Even when she talks, I'm like, I'm falling asleep, okay? Now, Angie's response to Heather not talking about her her daughter's sex life, again, this is why we don't need Angie. She has no type of, I don't even know what the word is, like 
she's just not sophisticated in a sense, or she doesn't have any common sense. That's what it is. Angie to me is a person who doesn't have any, she doesn't have any common sense. She gets played. She lets people play her. And she's kind of like, you know, I don't know, like idiotic, but I'm not saying that in like a derogatory way. Cause I don't know what words I can say and not say, like, I'm not trying to get canceled. I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but she just seems very like, like she doesn't get stuff. Like, it had nothing to do with religion. Why Heather held the boundary of we're not going to discuss my daughter's sex life right now. That had nothing to do with religion. It had to do with common decency. It had to do with respect for her child. It had to do with having healthy boundaries. It had nothing to do with religion. And so she's up here like, well, you know, when you're in the Salt Lake City and Mormon is just so indoctrinated in you and you can't like, no, it had nothing to do with religion, sweetheart. Like think for yourself. I'm, I know the producers fed you that line because to be honest, the producers half the time have no idea what the hell they're doing or talking about. They feed the housewife these ridiculous lines and they just regurgitate them. And I'm like, are the producers not watching the show? Like it's ridiculous. That's half the problem is the producers don't know what the hell they're doing. They really don't. They don't. That's why we're up here and we have screenshots and receipts and people coming out and st- and all of this stuff, debunking everything everybody's saying on the television because the producers aren't doing their jobs. They're really not. Anyway, now this was Angie's biggest misstep when it came to the rumors um, that Monica said about Meredith and the DMs and all of that stuff. It's the same exact misstep that Dr. Wendy did on Rohop when Ashley brought her the information that NECA allegedly said about, you know, Oshun and all that stuff, you know. She didn't go to the source to get their side first before believing and accusing. And that is where you will always go wrong. If anybody, and I mean anybody, comes to me and says, Hey, Candy Girl, this person is talking about you. They're saying this, 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 and this, and this, and this. Depending on who was saying it to me, I'm either going to let it go in one ear or out the other. If I think, ah, this is something I need to address, I'm not just going to believe that person. I'm going to say, okay. And then I'm going to go talk to the source themselves and say, hey, listen, I'm not accusing you of anything. I'm just giving you the heads up because I would play it, right? I'd be like, I'm giving you the heads up. This is what this person is saying or saying about me. Like, if you said it, you know, no problem. Let's just talk about it. But if not, I wouldn't know what really happened, what was said. That's how you are. That's how you should handle when somebody brings you a piece of gossip. Because I'm always like, the, I always look at the messenger as to why are you telling me this? What is your intentions? And let me make sure I go to the source before I disbelieve it. That's where Dr. Wendy got messed up. That's why I stopped watching Rohop because it's just a hot mess over there. You can't just take everything people say to you as face value as the truth. Whether that person has good intentions or not, you you can't believe the game of telephone. Angie, if she had any cell brain, brain cells in her head, And again, I'm not being rude, but like, girl, come on, you're on a show, wake up. If she, if she had any strategy in her mind, she would have gone straight to Meredith, not at the table in the group setting. This could happen on camera or off camera. It just needed to happen between the two of them and said, hey, listen, this is what has come to me. What's good? Let's talk about it. Before you believe and accuse. So Angie, miss me. You're just sloppy with it. You're doing all this. Because I I stand by what I think. I don't think Meredith um, was the source of it. In this particular one, I think she got fed it. But she didn't take the bait. She didn't bring it to the show. That's why um, Monica had to do it herself. And bring it up. But she still, but Meredith is smart and she still didn't take the bait because Meredith is not going to make herself legally liable for any type of um, slander or what's the other one? 
libel, whatever it is, you know, she's not going to make, she's not going to open herself up to catch a case. She's too smart. She's too smart. And she didn't take the bait. And then, and that's when you saw Monica running around like a chicken with her head cut off, trying to figure out how she's going to get out of this. So girl, (laughs) miss me with all of that. And like I said before, the only person talking about Angie is Monica. All right, here we go. Meredith. So like Meredith said on Watch Happens Live, Monica was the one who brought her the rumor about Angie during their flight back from Palm Springs. I believe that. That's too specific to be a lie. Um, And this is why she reached out to her when she got the DMs, because it was Monica was the one who was planting the, the seeds. And I don't think Meredith lying. I, I believe her. And like we said before, Meredith never said anything about the Angie rumors. It was Monica, just like the husband cheating rumors, right? 100%. And then also think about the Lisa Barlow rumors because everybody loves to bring that up. This is what happened with them. Do I think that Meredith planted or made up the Lisa Barlow SEC filings and about her business and all of that. Mm, no. Do I think she knew it came maybe from Jen Shaw's camp, maybe one of Jen Shaw's accounts, and she just decided to ride with it? Yeah. Do I think that she was very strategic with bringing certain rumors about Lisa to the show? Yes, because I think Meredith was on her get back. But the difference between Meredith, what she did to Lisa, and what's going on with with Angie is that Meredith was the one who said, yeah, I heard this about Lisa. Yeah, this is what I received. Yeah, this is what happened. Meredith brought it to the show herself. Whereas with Angie, Meredith looked very uncomfortable even talking about it. So they're two separate situations. Very, very different. And now let's talk about Miss Heather Gay. So Heather, I believe, was 100% correct not to discuss her daughter's sex life on camera, especially with evil Monica. She was protecting her child. She was 100% correct. I also loved how um, Heather called out Monica for still being married. We remember at the table when they were playing the game of when was the last time you had sex? And Heather was like, I don't feel comfortable talking about this. She was like, I'm the only single person at the table. Like, it's just a different look. You know what I mean? Because it's true. Because if all of them is like, I had sex a week ago, or I had one last night, it's the assumption it's with your husband. But if you're a single woman, you're like, well, I had sex last week. It's going to be like, oh, with who? Where? How? Blah, 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 blah. You know, it's it's total, it, it's apples to oranges when you're talking about certain things when if you are a single woman or if you are a married woman. She's 100% correct with that. And I agree with Lisa. Lisa was like, hey, I get it. She needs to stop. But then Monica kept coming after her. But I loved how Heather called Monica out and she was like, you're married. And Monica lied. She Monica said, oh, Michael won't sign the papers. That, you know, just because he won't sign the papers, blah, blah, blah. That's a lie because it came out that Monica refiled for the second time for divorce in June of 2023. June of 2023, six months ago, the filming had wrapped. So when they're at the table talking about who's married, Monica was 100% married to her husband, Michael. There were no divorce papers because the initial divorce papers was like a decade ago when she had sex with her brother-in-law. But they canceled those divorce papers because they reconciled. So when she's at the table saying he hasn't signed the papers, that's a lie. There were no papers to sign because they had reconciled. And then the court documents came out that she hadn't refiled in um, paperwork uh, in June of 2023. And then the divorce was finalized, I think, in October, right before BravoCon. So she's lying. There's no divorce papers to sign. Whether they are, maybe he's doing him and she's doing her. They're not maybe living together. But that's not the same as having divorce papers. So she was lying. And Heather was right. She was the only single woman at the table. Just because you can have sex with with someone who's not your husband doesn't mean that you are technically single. You know what I'm saying? 
So you go, girl. You go. And I, I love Tether. I'm just here for her. She's my one of my favorites this season. I actually think I might like her more this season than I, than I like Lisa, which is saying a lot because I, I love Lisa. But like I said, Lisa Barlow is on the wrong road. You know, Lisa aligning herself with Monica because she's holding a grudge against Meredith isn't the best look. I love Lisa, but I, and I've said this a hundred times, she doesn't have to fully trust Meredith. I get it. You know, you feel like she brought these rumors to the show. She talked about the SEC filing. She talked about my business, blah, blah, blah. Like, I, I totally get it. You're pissed at her and all of that stuff. So then you need to pick a side because when you're in Meredith's face, except for when you're yelling at her, you're like, oh, I want to move forward with you. Yeah, this is good. We'll come We'll come to each other, you know, all of that. Behind her back, you're like, I don't trust her. I'm keeping her arm's length. I'm not sure about this friendship, blah, 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 blah. And then the moment you get a little bit of bait from Monica, you take it and you run with it. You're done, Meredith. You're done. I'm done. Like, Lisa, I get it. You know, you had your hot mic moment. You went off on Meredith. I do think Meredith overreacted for too long, but now you're doing the same thing. Now you're overreacting for too long. You know, you got her with the hot mic. She got you back with the SEC filings. You don't have to be besties again, but you kind of need to just put this to bed. Not saying trust her, but just like put it to bed because it's exhausting and it's over and it's beating a dead horse and like, Enough is enough. And I like Lisa Barlow more when she's fun and she's confident and she's just a vibe. This version of Lisa isn't my favorite version. The bitter Betty Lisa, the, the you know, I, I, this version of Lisa just isn't for me. And it also takes her off her game because I think if she wasn't so in her feelings, I think she would see things a lot more clearly. And I think if she saw things a lot more clearly, she would realize that Monica is a snake not to be trusted and was completely using her to have her as cover. Do you know what I mean? So Lisa, go to therapy, work out your women friendship issues, come back and be the Lisa Barlow that I love. Now, Whitney. Whitney needs to go. Whitney is miserable. She's mean. There is like a meanness to her. I've never liked Whitney, but she's like nasty now. Like, do you notice how she's like really like the way she treated Lisa uh, at Meredith's party, the way she's treating Heather, shut the F up and like all this stuff. We saw their promos where um, her and Heather go at it again. There's like a nastiness to her. And I'm kind of like, Justin, blink twice if you need us to come and get you. You know what I mean? Like, Poor Justin, free Justin. Free, that no wonder he's not wearing his wedding ring. Do you know what I mean? I wouldn't want to wear my wedding ring if I had to go home to Whitney. That's a joke. Do you know what I mean? At that, that's an absolute joke. She's not fun to watch, and she's just and she's taking everything too far and too deep. And like, I'm so tired of her weaponizing her trauma, weaponizing her spirituality, weaponizing her healing journey. Like we're going to see it in the next week's episode when she's like to Heather, you exploited my sexuality. And Heather is like, you sound like an idiot. I was like, oh my God, I love you, Heather. Spot on. Like, no, Whitney, nobody is exploiting your sexuality except you. You've exploited your own sexuality, which is fine. I think that as women, as men, as human beings, however we, we choose to identify ourselves, if we want to brand, monetize, exploit, utilize our bodies, our sexualities, as long as we are adults, as long as it's safe and it's consenting, knock yourself out. But Whitney, you're the one who has very much exploited and branded and monetized your sexuality. When you're on TV, you know, swinging and, and being wasted on poles and, you know, doing naked painting sections with your husband and always being topless and doing all this, that, and a third, which I don't think that there's any problem with that. So I've, there's no judgment here. But I don't think she has a leg to stand on talking about Heather writing whatever she writes in her book, exploiting her sexuality. Like, girl, bye. Like, miss me with it. You're just mad that you didn't write a book. You know, you're just mad that you don't have a podcast or a book deal or anything because you don't have a brand. You are an influencer for your, uh, was it a jewelry line? You're, an, you're basically like an influencer for them. You're like the face of that jewelry line. That's not yours. What happened to your skincare line? You know, go exploit that. What happened to Wild Rose or whatever the hell it was called? 
Iris and Bo, Wild Rose, whatever it was called. Go exploit those avenues rather than hating on Heather because she has a book deal and her book's doing good. You know? Just just stop. She just she's too mean at this point. She's too mean. I need Angie to go and I need Whitney to go. And I want to get three new housewives. Cause I think that they have six now and it's okay. But I do think adding an extra one or like a or like a more hands-on friend of, I think would liven up the show. Whitney can go, Angie can go. And we need to add three more. You know what I mean? It's crazy. It's crazy. So that's kind of how I landed on this episode. So as always, you guys, be sure to like, subscribe, and share. But before I drop the link, in case anybody wants to come up and do your candy cane questions and comments, I am going to quickly do a story on the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills because we're here. (laughs) So why not? All right. Give me one second because I think it's a really interesting um, story and I think you guys would be into it. All right. Let me get it together. Hit the like button while we wait, guys. Dun, dun, dun. All right. So it's loading. So this story is going to be about Kyle explaining, quote, the real reason why her and Dorit are no longer close, why she's distanced herself from Dorit. Okay. That's what this story is going to be about. Wait, give me one more sec because it's not loading. And I really want it to load because I want to show you guys. Okay. One sec. All right. Yay. I got it. All right. So 